Hi, Chevra. Welcome back to Opining in Olam Haba. Uh, sorry, missed last week. Um, just a whole bunch of things got in the way. Uh, but here we are. Uh, you have a little little light, see, shining uh, behind me. And um, it's, it's mood lighting. Because we're about to pick up, I, on the way that I see it, it's 56 lines into this stanza. I think this 15th stanza that I mentioned uh, that I uh, in the WhatsApp, the first word on the line is bidrachim. Um, it, there's a period. It says va'amru v'nanim miziv hashchina. I'm trying to give you a landmark in the middle. Also, uh, it's a few lines down from uh, a source in brachot yud zayin. Um, brachot yud zayin amud bed about ha'olam haba in bolo achil v'lo shesia. That in the next world, the Gemara says there's no eating or drinking, and all there is are the righteous. Sitting in their crowns, and nanim uh, is and deriving benefit from the lahavdil, the divine light, right? Deriving benefit from that light. So we're up to discussing really here by that uh, period what that means. So a few lines down from that Gemara, in the middle of the paragraph, Ritzoni Lomar sheotana neshamot mit angot b'masha masigot v'yodot me'amita rabori is borach. That the, the neshamos, the souls that are there, they derive benefit, they're delighting, they're literally mit angot, they, they're deriving pleasure from um, how they can comprehend and know the true nature of Hashem. Amita sabore. Kemosha mit angot chayos hakodesh. Usha'ar madregos hamalachim. Bema shehem asigim biyodim mitzuato. Just as, uh, you know, the holy... Um, holy beings and angels uh, do also derive benefit from the knowledge of the divine. Meaning, a neshama becomes like a spirit. It becomes a spiritual being, like an angel. Uh, that's essentially uh, what uh, a neshama is: something spiritual, which derives benefit, which derives pleasure, which is greatest pleasure is spiritual pleasure, understanding the. Authentic nature, the MS kite of Akadosh Baruch Hu. You know, there was a beautiful um, shear that we had uh, just uh, about an hour and a half ago, uh, Rabbi uh, Nassim Muller, who talked about the Novomitsky Rebbe, Zecher Tzadik Levracha, passed away around this time last year. Uh, he just talked about, he spent like 25 minutes just talking about the truthfulness of. The Rebbe, how literally he, he would not tell a lie, could not tell a lie, even the smallest thing that to us is like not a big deal to him. It's like, how could I do that? I can't, I have to be, I have to be honest, perfectly honest. And, you know, there's a reason why truth is so important uh, to what it is to be a person, to be a human being, to be a Jew, because ultimately after 120, if we're truthful with ourselves, then we will understand the knowledge of the true God. ki hatova ve'atachlit ha'acharon hu lehagia el ha'chevra ha'elyona hazos. He says that the the greatest the purpose the you know the the goodness and the purpose uh, ultimate purpose of this world is to get to this chevra to this heavenly chevra. I want to be a part of this chevra. What's this chevra? The angel. I want to hang out with the angels. I want to hang out with this with the heavenly beings. Vilios bechavad azeh to be in this exalted, this this glorified state. Ube mala hanis keres vikiu ma nefesh kemoshe bi arnu adin sof vikiu ma bore is barach shu sibas kiu ma lafishe hisiga oto kemoshe is bar be filosofim arishonim vizeu tov agadol she ain tov la akishlo. Um, you know, basically, right? Because if we're connecting to that that infinite place, that infinite space, right? What an neshama really is, it's a, taste, it's, it's a taste of eternity. So if we can get there, if we can be zocha to get there, that's the greatest good. And there is no, there. you can't even compare it to any other good in this world. Every good, right? One, one, someone told me, uh, compared once, um, you know, just kind of this world, worldly pleasures like, to like cereal, right? 
you know, one day you wake up, you like Frosted Flakes. If you've eaten Frosted Flakes for a few weeks, eventually you're like, ah, you know, it's time for Apple Jacks, right? It's time. Or if you get to our age, right, then you eat that sugared cereal and then your hands start shaking <laughs> after, after a couple of hours. So you probably want to stay away from the Frosted Flakes anyways. But that's the point. This is eternal. This is forever, right? That's why the, the values and, and the, the wisdom of Torah is so timeless because it's eternal, it's real, it's unchanging. It's a taste, really, of eternity. There is no delight, there is no pleasure, earthly pleasure that can be compared to it. For how can we compare something that is tamid, that is limitless, that is without end, that is endless, to something that has a limit, to something that has boundaries, how can we compare the infinite to the finite? There is no comparison. That's another uh, landmark for you here in the, uh, within this long stanza. As it says, That's what it's, why it says, so that it will be good for you. The Pasuk said it will be good for you. And you'll have length of days. You'll have long days. Say, oh, is that talking about you'll have long life? No. It's long days. It's long life in the world. Right? Now, God's not proud. You can't promise whatever. Right? Hashem has his own accounting of who gets long life, who doesn't get it. We should all be zochet to long life here in this world and the next world. But it's, the idea is, it'll be good for you here, and you'll have long life where? Liyom shekulo aruch. Laolam shekulo aruch. In the world that is completely limitless. The hara hashalema. Okay, so that's olam haba. We got it, right? There it is. There's olam haba. That's olam haba. To be in a place, a spiritual place, in a spiritual chevra of angels basking in the glory of God and, de- and, and just deriving pleasure and delight uh, in the knowledge of, of Hashem's existence and his, his, uh, the authentic nature of God. The Ara HaShalema, the Hanakama HaGedola, and the greatest bad, the greatest negative, and the greatest uh, revenge, who Shetikaris HaNefesh V'toved, is that right? So, what's the worst thing that could happen to a person? Is that your soul gets cut off, and your soul like ceases to exist, right? Imagine, right? God forbid, don't imagine it. But like, right? Basically, saying that, that, that what if the soul, some something happened, it disintegrated, and it stops, and there is a limit, right? So there is no staying power afterwards. Vishaloti yechaya the kayames. That's what Karis is. Where somehow the Rambam says someone can do something so bad that their neshama literally at the end of their life, God forbid, a million years, we shouldn't, from any, for any of us, for any of us we know, God forbid, the neshama literally just gets cut. It stops. Right? Whereas generally a neshama, we believe it's, it's infinite. But somehow, some way, you, you stop it. It's not infinite. It's finite. It stops. And it disintegrates. It dissolves. That's kares. Come on, ki kare ti kare da nefesh ahiv amruzal ha kares bolam haze ti kares he kares bolam haze. You'll you'll be cut off in this world, and ti kares bolam haba. You'll be cut off in the next world. Vinem mar v'haisa nefesh ado ado Hashem tzur rabbi tzur achayim, and it says that the soul right. Uh, uh, the soul should be uh, bound in the bond of eternal life, right? We hear that a lot. Uh, that's in the Kel Male Rachamim. Hine kol ma shabachar veharagil betanuge haguf umas beemes veahav sheker. So he says, like any anyone who um, chooses the you know that which they're accustomed to with the you know physical pleasures and despises and turns away from the truth, from true goodness and wisdom and ethics and morals and Torah and mitzvot, the ayav sheker and loves falsehood and lies, nikaret me'otama Allah will be cut off from that, the ability to be eternal. V'yisha'er chomer nikaret, and that individual 
will remain physical, finite, right, corporeal, so that there is an end to them, God forbid. As the prophet explained, the next world that doesn't have, you know, physical, there's no sensory pleasures there, sensory, you know, experiences. And that's why it says, the eye has never seen and can't, can't see anything like this except for God, right? Our eye can't see or understand in the next world. And the Gemara says, right, that the prophets, that all of the prophets didn't uh, only prophesied on the Messianic era, what's going to be in the time of Mashiach. But Olam Haba, the next world, no one knows, no one's ever seen. Why? Because you can't, you can't comprehend it possibly as we've discussed. Omnam ha'yehudim tovim. Basically saying like in this world, there are so many, there are good things that happen to us in this world. It's because Hashem takes away uh, any impediments uh, to being able to do good things, right? Because we, how can we be good? How can we keep the Torah and keep the mitzvot and, you know, and do acts of chesed and tzedakah and help people if we're, God forbid, sick or, or, or we're hungry or uh, we're, you know, living through uh, wars and, and sieges and famines. And that's why, right, the, the God will make it so that if you're, you know, on the right path, Hashem hopefully will push away those kinds of things for you. Right? And uh, Hashem will give you that sense of hopefully that tranquility to be able to do the things that will get you to merit the next world. Because the reality is, Hashem's not going to give you reward for a mitzvah in this world because a mitzvah, again, is, is infinite, is limitless, and this world is physical. We're going to stop here and uh, Mirza Hashem pick up uh, next week. But, whoa, uh, did it really, uh, did it really uh, heat up um, as we've moved uh, through this, uh, this important stanza. Have a great day.